Good evening, everyone. Good evening. We are so excited about Purity with Purpose this month of February as we showcase trailblazers, those who are making an impact not only in our communities and in their own lives, but in the world. So with further more, we thank you for tuning in. We ask that you go ahead and tag a friend, go ahead and share because there is a word from the Lord. And we have here our lovely host and founder, visionary, apostle, the Wanda Owens. Hallelujah. We thank God for her. I have my co-host here, Pastor Deonni Faulkner. Hallelujah. And then myself, Pastor Natasha. And like I said, go ahead and take a friend, share and like, because there is a word from the Lord. And we're going to go ahead and open with scripture on tonight, followed by prayer with Pastor Deonni Faulkner coming from Psalms 47. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. For the Lord most high is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved. See how God is gone up with a shout the Lord with the shout of a trumpet, sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises unto our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing ye praises with understanding. God reigneth over the heathen, God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. The prince of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abram. For the shields of the earth belong unto God, he is greatly exalted. May God add a blessings to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy and divine word. Father God, we come before you tonight with thanksgiving and praises. Oh God, we lift you up and we magnify your name on today. Oh God, for bringing us together once more and again. We thank and praise you, not for what you've done, but just because of who you are. We lift you up and magnify your name, oh God, for each and every person that is gathered here tonight on this line. We ask right now, oh God, that you flood this line with your presence like never before, oh God, that you give us an ear to hear what your spirit has to say on tonight. We thank and praise you, oh God, for your word, oh God. We thank and praise you for what you're doing in this season, oh God. We lift you up and magnify your name that we can stand on your promises, oh God. We thank and praise you for increasing our faith right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank and praise you, oh God, for your healing virtues, oh God. We thank and praise you, oh God, that you hung, bled, and died on the cross for each and every one of us, oh God. That we can be free to magnify your name, oh God. That we can be free to gather and to sit at your feet, oh God, and to seek your face, oh God. We thank and praise you right now, oh God, that there is power in the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you for deliverance, oh God, and supernatural breakthrough, oh God. We ask right now in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you hide us behind the cross, oh God, that we might decrease, oh God, that you must increase right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Touch and sanctify this word, oh God, that it comes to life like never before, oh God. We lift you up and we magnify your name, oh God. We thank and praise you, oh God, for this season of manifestation, oh God. We thank and praise you, oh God, for this season of abundance, oh God. We thank and praise you, oh God, that in this season, oh God, no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper, oh God. We lift you up and we give you glory, we give you honor and praise, and it is in Jesus' name that we pray, amen and amen. Hallelujah, glory to God. Amen. Amen. We thank God for that awesome prayer. And with no, uh, now we would turn it over to our lovely host, Apostle DeWanda Owens. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. We thank God for being here another uh, Wednesday uh, to share the word of God. We have an awesome topic on tonight. What's our topic, ladies? No matter, no matter what. what. No matter what. And that is a fitting topic. Actually, this is uh, as a Pastor Natasha said, this is uh, a, a segment that we are, are honoring God, but we are also showcasing uh, women of God and, and uh, people of God that have, have made some history that not just black history, but it's history. And so we want to thank God tonight just for being able to be on the line. And so we're going to go to the book of First Samuel. And we're going to start reading at uh, in chapter 17, verses 38. And our topic for tonight is no matter what. 
So it reads, and Saul armed David with his armor. And he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he assayed to go, for he had no, not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even a script and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David. And the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked upon and looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his God. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me. And I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, thy comest to me with a sword and a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. And verse number 50 said, so David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone, and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. May the Lord and a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy and divine word. Our topic for tonight is no matter what. And when we think about no matter what, we think about uh, the, the, the aspect of being able to push past anything, any obstacles that come up against us. And so I thought it would be fitting to utilize David uh, as an example, because sometimes we will get sized up by how we look, you know, and, and my grandma used to say big things come in small packages. And so we sometimes will get caught off guard. But when we have a no matter what mentality, which is what David had. Uh, he was going to go. He offered up himself to go. He wanted to go. He wanted to, to go, in, go out and fight the Philistine no matter what. So when we think about uh, uh, the call on our lives and we think about what God has in detail for us to do, are you willing to do it no matter what? Talk about that, Pastor Natasha. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, th that's one of the most beautiful things I love about this story is because at the beginning, we see here that David had a made up mind. He was confident in who he served. And he he had already decided that the God he served was far greater than the giant he faced. And it reminds me of the three Hebrew boys when they refused to bow uh, and no matter what, they still chose to keep their faith and their trust in God. And they knew and trusted that God would deliver them whether this side or the next. And so just like, like them, David, he had the tenacity. He had the strength to keep pushing forward. And so I think it begins with a made up mind and trusting in God fully. Yes. Yes. And I totally agree. What would you say, Pastor Dion? I totally agree that it, you have to have a made up mind and that faith in God that no matter what, you're going to trust in him, you're going to serve him and you're going to do what he's called you to do. And it's almost like um, it reminds me, I, I think about Daniel, that even when they said that he couldn't pray, he yet be, he yet continued to pray the same time every day, no matter what the decree was, he was going to continue to pray to his God and do what he did. And sometimes no matter what, we got to continue to do what God has called and has ordained us to do, no matter what the circumstances or what, who comes against us, we got to continue to walk this thing out out and press it out no matter what it looks like. Yes, yes, I totally agree. Uh, what gets me excited about this particular topic tonight, no matter what, is that David volunteered for something. Yes, he did. And 
and, and people, we're just going to bring it on home tonight. People will volunteer. I need to say this. People will volunteer for a project and then give you an excuse why they can't follow through. But David, he volunteered and they assumed that David had not counted up the cost, but he volunteered no matter what the cost was. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that he looked at it as if he was so disqualified that Saul attempted to give him his armor. But David had a no matter what mentality to know that I have not proved your armor, but I know what I got. And I know what I've been called to do. And I know that I can utilize what God has given me to be able to accomplish and to carry this thing out no matter what. And so when we talk about no matter what, we utilize David tonight, we, we take away the excuses. So the first thing we would do is take somebody else's uh, somebody else uh, yeah. anointing, take somebody else oil, take somebody else prayer, take somebody else way of doing things, take somebody else vision, take somebody else view, take somebody else analogy. But David was offered up Saul's arm. He rejected it because he had a, a no matter what mentality, if I volunteered in the name of the Lord. And the reason why he volunteered is because the Philistine came up against his God. And what happens, what happens today in, 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 in our time is that we don't get offended on behalf of our God. No matter what, we shouldn't allow anyone to dumb down our God and who he is, not just who he is to us, but who he is through us, who he is in us. And so David lined it all up tonight. He lined it up that we should be ready, willing to go and do what God has called us to do no matter what, no matter if you don't have a way to get there, no matter what, no matter if you are lacking a few things that they say you need to be qualified, do it anyway, no matter what. So we got to think about these things and think about it hard tonight because we really say no matter what, but we really don't mean no matter what. We don't mean all or nothing. We don't mean all in. We don't mean go anyhow. We just say that. And some of the things we say sound so good and cliche to where we just say it without a thought and we don't even mean it. And then when we when it's brought back to us and we it's regurgitated back to us, we're like, oh, did, did I really say that? Well, I didn't mean it like that. But you said it because it's disqualified. He volunteered because he stood up for something that he knew that he he knew was something worth standing up for and then he volunteered to go and fight up against a giant a, a giant i don't know what the giant is in your life tonight but i can tell you that if you stand in, on, on what god has given you no matter what and no matter how big the obstacle may seem you can take it down and you don't have to do it like they did it across the street you don't have to do it like they did it last week. You don't have to do it like somebody else is doing it. Do it the way God has given you to do it, and it will work no matter what. What would you say about that, Pastor Natasha? I totally agree, Apostle. And, and one of the things that I liked about David, and what you just said, that he, he went on no matter what. David had proved with uh, his experience with God before why people was not watching. Uh, when he had went against the bear and the lion, and he knew that even in those moments, God came and showed up to his rescue when he was being attacked. And when we think about those attacks spiritually, there are are things that we face that are considered giants at that time but the more that we allow God to trust us and see us through those those giants they become not and then the next giant comes in bigger and bigger and we know that each time God is going to deliver us he's going to deliver yes. us out and so I agree with you apostle David had a no matter what experience because he knew God had had proven himself to him time and time again amen Amen. I totally agree. What would you say, Pastor Dion? Amen. He had that, he had that mentality, like Pastor Natasha said, because God had proven himself 
to David time and time again. So he knew just like God had delivered him before, he was going to deliver him out of the hand of the Philistine. And I like how you brought that up, Apostle, about how David volunteered for that assignment. Um, so many times we volunteer for things based off of somebody else doing it. So we're going to follow with the Joneses and not, not like you said, not counting up the cost. But David wasn't doing it because everybody else volunteered. He did it because he was, tr he was trusting in God and because it was something that he had to do in the name of God because he knew that God was going to deliver them out of the hands of the Philistines. And sometimes when we, when we take assignments or we volunteer for things and we are totally trusting in God and we have that no matter what mentality because we know God is going to deliver, deliver us out of it, then we know what the outcome is going to be instead of just trying to keep up with the Joneses and volunteer just because and then we don't have a follow through. So when we have that no matter what mentality that God is going to deliver us out no matter what, because we know exactly who we serve and what he's capable of doing. That's why David was able to volunteer because he knew God was not going to fail him. And what I love about it is, is that Saul depended on his army. Yes. David depended on God. Yes. And see, when you depend on God, you can go no matter what. You go in the name of God. You go in the name of, of Jesus. You go in the name, that is your equipment. The Bible tells us that whatever we lack, he says his strength is made perfect in our weakness. And so sometimes just because people are educated, just yeah. because people are well-groomed, well-spoken of, they have, have high platforms. We tend to get in awe about these things, not knowing that all we need is the anointing on our life to cause things to change. Even though Saul had had all this confidence in his armor, he was not volunteering to go take down the giant. But David, hallelujah, depended strictly on God and was willing, was willing to offer up his life for, to, 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 to defend his God. And so when we think about what we've been called to do and we think of, and we say that we, we, we've been called to do this and we've been called to do that, but are we really ready to give our life over to God? Because that's what David was doing. Mm -hmm. it, it reminds me of, 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 of the, the, the scripture in the Bible where he said, where she said, if I perish, I perish. Yes. But I'm going and I'm going to do what God has called me to do. Yes. And I don't see uh, I don't see enough of that being pulled out of the body of Christ in this hour. We've gotten so comfortable in, in saying, oh, it don't matter instead of no matter what, until we don't push and press our way through. Not only did David take off of Saul's armor, because it reminds me that if you utilize somebody else's armor, they will say that their armor did yeah. what, what God was getting ready to do. So we need to learn to depend on God so that we can take man and, and man's armor, man's ability out of the equation so that God can get the glory. God will close doors and he's closed some doors tonight in your life because you are so busy elevating other people and, and looking to man to, to make things happen to where he shut the door to where you can't even knock. And because you can't knock, you have to stand in him. And that's where he is. No matter what brings us to a place where you look around and you see nobody but God. And you see him so strong and mighty to where you go in him. You go in the name of Jesus. You go in the power of his might. And you begin to, you begin to decree and declare his glory. You begin to say, God, I said it because you told me. God, I'm going because you sent me. I'm standing because you told me to stand. I'm yeah. speaking because you told me to speak. Even yeah. though I'm not educated like they say, and I'm not qualified like they say, I'm going because you said you qualified those who you call. And you called me and you chose me and you sent me. And so David, even though he was still, uh, they, they, the Bible describes him as a youth. The Bible describes him as a ruddy little boy, but he was anointed. And, and so 
So we, we tend to try to size people up and tell them they're not this and they're not that, but don't let them tell you you're not anointed and that you don't have the confidence that God can do anything, that he'll do anything and that he will bring you out. And so as David began to, to, to minister to Saul, he rejected Saul. And so God is saying that in order for us to really have a no matter what mentality, we need to reject some of the things people are trying to arm us up with because it's not what he's arming us up with. It's what we've let people put on us. We've let people speak things over us and we receive yeah. it because we heard it and because we don't know any better. But God says that you get a no matter what mentality and you begin to take those things off. You begin to say, I'm not that because that's not what God told me. Mm -hmm. I can go in the name yeah. of Jesus and watch him oh lord be glorified i can watch him oh lord take this thing to another level because if god said it hallelujah the bible says he watches over his word to perform it here it is a little old ruddy youth they they took the time to describe Pride him in the Bible, so hallelujah, to let us know that even in your youth, even in yeah. your inexpertise, even what you don't know won't stop you from where you, what God say you're going to go. If you're going to go in the name of God, you're going to get there. And not only will you get there, you're going to get there with an audience. The Bible says that when he took down that Philistine, all yeah. the people were around. The Bible says that, th that David reminded him that you come with to me with a sword. I'm not going to come to you with a sword. I'm going to come to you in the name of the Lord. I'm not going to speak ill against you. I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to encourage you even though you try to tear me down because I know that I'm coming in the name of the Lord. And no matter what you say about me, no matter what if you don't like me, no matter what if you don't stand with me, I'm standing with God. So I'm going to have victory. And so no matter what mentality moves things out of the way it moves things out of the way you begin to walk in the power of God because the 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 things of men is powerless and the things of God is powerful and so when you learn to tap into the powerful, you begin to walk like you're powerful. You begin to yeah. talk like you, you believe that you're powerful. Some of us just don't believe. You know why? Because we're too busy wearing other men's armor. Talk about that, Pastor Natasha. Oh, that was good, Apostle. That was some good word right there, some good nuggets. I hope they're tuning in on tonight. But yes, Apostle, too many times we're taking on the identity of other people, trying to do it, preach like them, pray like them, doing it the way that they're doing it. But the Bible tells us that we should meditate on the word day and night. We have to work out our own soul salvations and then let God's statues grow in us. And so it goes back to a purity with purpose we had, which was another awesome word that was given about treasures you were telling them to set their treasures in heaven and like David his, even though his appearance didn't look like nothing the strength came from the inner side he had built himself up on the inside and so our strength has to come within and it reminds me also about faith it reminds me of Peter when Jesus was walking on the water and he had told them to come sometimes when, when it's time to put off that old man and to move forward where God is taking you you have to have enough faith to leave others behind my God, leave others behind who don't have enough faith to go where you're trying to go. And that's what David had to do. Leave them all behind. I can't do it in y'all identity. I can't do it the way y'all was trained. See, y'all had former training, the military training. My training was with the sheep. Yes. Praising God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What would you say, Pastor Deanna? Amen. I Pastor Natasha took some of what I was going to say about yeah. David's training, being with the sheep. Amen. But even from the moment that David was anointed, he was he was set apart when when Samuel went to look for them and he realized that all his brothers were not what God was looking for. When God said, no, don't look at their outward appearance, because David was set apart even even from the young boy when he was anointed. And we don't, we have to understand like he didn't, he didn't need Saul's armor because he had that faith in God. And so many times, like you said, apostle, we put on somebody else's armor, trying to walk in somebody else's anointing instead of knowing our own identity in Christ, knowing who we are and having that faith to trust that when God tells us to go, we need to go when he tells us to go and that he's going to, he's going to give us what we need. Like he gave, 
gave David the tools to be able to fight the Philistine. He didn't need the armor and he didn't need the sword. But so many times we let what people say about us to bog us down and to weigh us down when God has already equipped us with everything we need. And so it's, it's like when he told Abraham to get from out of his country and get from away from his kinfolk and to go into the land that he's given him. And so in this season, God is telling us to get from away from them people. And like you said, leave their armor behind so that he can do what he needs to do. And so that we can be able to slay those giants and use what God has given us and not what other people in their armor and leave all that other stuff behind. Amen. Amen. And another thing about um, our topic tonight, no matter what, is that David did not come recommended. No. He never got um, the validation from other people. No. He just knew what God said. And see, sometimes we sit down on our victory. We bow out gracefully on our vision because we don't have validation from men. When you take on a no matter what mentality, you really don't seek. As a matter of fact, you don't need validation from men. You don't need anybody to co-sign. You don't need anybody to be on, uh, uh, on your side as long as you got God and you know that he's told you to do what he's told you to do. I know many people ask me all the time, how do I do what I do? I know God told me to do it. See, when I meet people who are wavering, I know they really didn't, they really didn't hear God like I did. And I'm not gonna say, cause I can't say what other people deal with, but I can say for me, when I heard God say, I am this and do this and do that. I sit up at attention and I begin to put things in motion because he spoke it to me. But see, we got so many people that miss the no matter what all and the no matter what anointing and the no matter what manifestation because they don't take on a no matter what mentality. We speak it, we preach it, we quote the scriptures, but we don't live it. How do I know we don't live it? Because the Bible says that we will produce fruit and the fruit will expose us. Some of us have allowed our fruit tree to dry up. Mm -hmm. Some of us stop even watering the seed. Some of us don't have a no matter what mentality. Some of us are preaching in the pulpit. People are getting healed and delivered because we are gifted, called, anointed, and appointed. But yet, we don't have a no matter what mentality. And the no matter what mentality does not, is not set aside so much for other people, but it's to get us to a place in God. See, David was already a king. Even though the Bible in this particular passage describes him as a ruddy boy. He was already a king. And because he had a no matter what mentality, he just walked out the levels and the steps he needed to walk to be able to take his kingship right. Some of us will never get the crown because we don't have a no matter what mentality. We are so afraid to say, it's me. God's called me. I'm going to stand no matter what. I'm going to speak no matter what. So what if it sounds like I'm speaking Ebonics? I got some people that only can understand Ebonics. Mm -hmm. And God is going to send them. Everybody got a calling. Everybody got an assignment. But many sit down on it. Many miss it. Because they don't have a no matter what mentality. Glory to God. We have a young lady that is joining us here tonight who I say has a no matter what mentality. I have known her since before she was born because I carried her in my womb. But I thank God for what he's doing in her life and that she has a no matter what mentality. I introduce to you 
my one and only daughter, Alexis Owens. Yes. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. We showcase you tonight because of your no matter what mentality. We showcase you tonight because even at your in your youth, that people will say she's too young, she looks too, too, too young, she's this and she's that. You still offer up the oil that God has placed on your life. And, and we want to showcase you and salute you tonight because I give God the glory. I know I'm hard on you. I'm your mama. I'm, your, I'm hard on you. I'm hard on you because I know, hallelujah, what God spoke to me concerning you before you were born. And I have seen some things come and I know some more things are, are, are going to come. So we're going to turn the floor over to you tonight to tell us uh, who you are and, and what God is doing in your life and, and where you expect God to take you in this no matter what season. Okay. Well, good evening. Um, my mother did give a brief introduction, but my name is Alexis Owens. I am the owner of Laid by Lexi LLC. Uh, I specialize in natural hair care, um, braids, locks, extensions, pretty much anything that has to do with protecting your hair, I can pretty much, um, I can do that. Um, I'm very versi versatile, so um, I specialize in multiple things, which that intrigues a lot of um, women to come to me because I'm considered a one-stop shop. Um, the, the purpose of being a one-stop shop is making sure that you, have, you only have one person to touch your hair. I know growing up, you know, we would go to one stylist growing up. If it wasn't Renee's, you know, we wasn't going to anybody. We wasn't just letting multiple people in our hair. And, and she took care of my hair for years. And it was the reason why it was always growing and thriving. So she had anointed hands and I have anointed hands. So that is the background on my business. Moving forward, I'm getting into more of natural hair care products. So that is what I've been working on and I'm hoping to get that launched by the end of the year this year. So just trying to make sure that I'm perfecting it and getting the right recipes in place so that it can not just work for a specific type of hair texture, but it can be something that all women can be able to use. Amen, amen, amen. So uh, what is your greatest challenge um, in, the, uh, in the business right now? The greatest challenge would possibly be time management, um, trying to maintain the demand of clientele that I have coming in, um, making sure that I'm available to the growth um, that I've experienced in these last two years with the clientele. Um, I honestly went from possibly doing, um, you know, one or two heads a, a week um, to being booked up to where I'm, I can work full time and I'm still not able to really meet the demand of women that um, are asking for my services. Um, I actually have salon equipment at my house because sometimes I have to take women after hours after I pick up my son because I just don't have enough time to fit everybody in at my shop. So definitely amen. the time, the time management has been a challenge. Amen. Amen. One thing definitely um, I, I have noticed uh, about you is that you really do. Uh, this topic is very uh, fitting to you. You really do have a no matter what uh, mentality. And um, I, I look at you and I say, Lord have mercy. I know that you watched me. Um, you know, uh, growing up and you watch me work two jobs and you watch me, me push. What kind of effect did that have on who you are right now? Ooh. Okay. Let me try not to get emotional. I get emotional when I talk about my mom now. Cause she works so hard. Like she's always worked so hard. But um, it definitely um, showed me that it could be done. Um, I could do it with while raising Jackson. Um, 
I seen you like make it work no matter what. So I know that, okay, if my mom was able to work two, three jobs and still make sure that I was well taken care of, then I know that I can do whatever I need to do to make sure that I'm taking care of my son and showing up, not for him, but just for myself as well, because I had that example. And I definitely think it made it a little bit easier for me because I didn't question whether I could do it. I knew that I could do it. It was always like, oh, I know I can make it in Dallas because I watched my mama make it in Dallas. <laughs> oh, I know I can, you know, work at a better answer and start off and have a career, which I did because I, I wanted to be like my mom. I wanted to be successful. I wanted to, I knew I wanted to be a businesswoman because that's what, that was the foundation that you pretty much laid for me. So amen. I'm proud of myself. I didn't get too emotional. Amen. Amen. Okay, <laughs> let Pastor Deanna ask a question. I'm about to get emotional. That was so awesome. I like, know. <laughs> um, so, um, um, so you said that you do the one-stop shop. Is the hair the only thing that you do at your shop is just, um, is just do hair. And, and and by the way, you do an awesome, phenomenal job with hair. I, just, I, I love it. But is that the only service that you offer <laughs> is hair? No. So I actually also do makeup. Um, and I've been working t- towards perfecting my makeup skills, which they've gotten really, really good. Um, especially like over the last year, I've seen an, an improvement in my makeup skills and I've gotten booked for weddings, birthdays, um, different events and stuff. So a lot of people actually don't know that I can do makeup. And then when I post that, you know, I've done makeup, they look at it like, oh my goodness, you really, you really can do makeup really well. So it, de- it definitely is something that I want to push more because I don't think I promote it enough, but I do, I enjoy doing makeup as well. Amen. Amen. How do you think um, in your, uh, you know, I know you tell everybody you you wrote up in church. I had you in church seven days a week. How do you think your um, childhood um, being in church, how do you think that affect that? What kind of effect does that have on you as a person, as as a whole, and then you as a businesswoman right now? As a person, church definitely gave me the foundation. Um, It kept me grounded being in church. And I think that's why I'm so grounded now. You know, I don't allow myself to derail too much. Um, I love gospel. Gospel music has always gotten me through. So I have, I grew up having all these favorite, well, of course, we couldn't listen to anything else in the car, but gospel music. So a lot of times, you know, I can play some gospel music in my, in my house or in my car, and I can go to a whole different place and have my own personal session of worship um, just by going back to all those songs that I grew up hearing in church. Uh, As far as how it, affects me business wise, definitely just my faith. Um, because it's not easy when you first start off the first few years of you working for yourself. It's not easy. You're not really seeing the the profit um return yet. Mm-hmm. Um you're you're really pushing out more more money to keep the business afloat before you actually start to see it. Um, see that that profit or you know before you break even or even start to receive an increase Mm -hmm. so it takes a lot to still have that faith to keep going even when it seems as if you don't really like okay God like I know you said this is what I should do and I'm trusting you fully um and that is very it's scary when you actually really do step out on faith when because it's like I'm I'm doing this with minimum you know minimal resources Mm -hmm. and still being able to stay afloat especially after the pandemic that we had you know still being able to 
have my suite, you know, um, I saw a lot of business owners have to move out and go back to, the, to their homes. Um, and I was prepared to do so as well if needed be, but God said that not you, not now, you know, I wouldn't bring you here if I didn't have a plan to keep you here. So definitely faith plays a huge part um, in how I keep going. Amen. And what are your, um, what are your, um, what would you say that it is your calling? Helping people. Helping people? I, yes, I enjoy helping people. That's probably the, the thing I enjoy most about um, doing hair is meeting so many different women and giving them an experience that goes beyond just getting your hair done. Um, they tell me all the time, you know, they, they'll leave the chair feeling like they just left therapy, you know, because I'm just that warming person that makes people feel like they're, um, that they're understood. You know, I, I'm a good listener. So, you know, I, I believe that my shop is my own form of ministry because I'm able to reach people through my gift and not only just, you know, make them look good, but I, you know, I can make them feel a lot better too when they leave. Amen. Amen. Pastor Natasha, do you have a question? Uh, yes, uh, Lady Alexis, uh, you are such an inspiration and I have had the experience of you doing my And what would you say to someone who were faced with a lot of challenges uh, that felt like giving up? You said, what would I say to someone? Yes, who were faced with a lot of challenges, such, you know, as a single mom or a single parent trying to be an entrepreneur and to push forward in their vision? I would definitely um, tell them to seek God first so that they can get a clear vision. Because sometimes when you're not seeking God first and you're not getting a clear vision, it won't manifest in the way that you would like so um definitely make sure that you are taking that time to man uh meditate on what god is telling you to do um i journal a lot um i have a i've always had a journal i keep journals throughout since i was yeah. in high school i've always journaled so when i journal things, whatever it is that I, that I need to get out in that journal. Sometimes God will put stuff in, in me and I just start writing. And that gives me that confirmation of, okay, because to me, that's a form of making it plain when you put it on paper, when you mm -hmm. put it in front of you and you actually see it for yourself. It, it, and not only does it like hold you accountable, but you know, it just, it's a good way to, uh, to hear from God and make sure that you're getting everything that he's sending to you in front of you. Amen. Amen. Well, definitely we would, we wanted to honor you and showcase you for black history because you, um, not just because you're my daughter, but I, I, I believe, and, and, and God has spoken this to me many times that you have a, a gift and you have a calling on your, on your life and you, um, even though it was it, it, the youth, the youth love you. The young ladies, the young girls, you are their inspiration. Even though you know Madison, you know, they, they want to follow up behind you, and sometimes, but they love you and your inspiration. And and um, I just see you having uh, creating a um, uh, a girls line. Uh, a girl's line of not just uh, products. I see it turning into an entire ministry. I see it uh, being something that you end up having to do to where you're having workshops. I see um, uh, you teaching teaching the young girls how to uh, properly braid, how to properly care for their hair, how to properly care for themselves uh, and you know uh, their personal hygiene. I see you doing a lot of teaching. And uh, to me, that is ministry. And for God to, 
to speak that to me con concerning you. It was affirmation for me as, as a mother that if you have that type of uh, stamina in you to, to for God to use you in such a way, I just had to bow down to God and say, Lord, I thank you. Because it, it's, it's we all, uh, you know, when, when you have children, uh, we all want the best for our children. But, but when you start to see the fruit, you just have to give God glory. And then when you look around, you just have to thank God because there's so many things going on in the world today. And so many people um, are dealing with certain things. And so I just wanted to let you know that I thank God for where you are. I thank God for where you're going. And I give him glory for who you are. Yes, Lord. And that is the honest to God truth. And yes, I am. I'm a hard, I'm a pusher. I'm a pusher. Yeah. I'm going to push people to the limit, especially when God has shown me that people are sitting down or trying to be relaxed on what he's given them. And so God is, God is, is, is getting ready to take you to another level, but let's guess what he wants you to do. He wants you to focus strictly on what he's telling you to do in this season. And when, when distractions come, they set us back. And sometimes we don't see it as a distraction. Sometimes it comes in a disguise as if I'm coming to make your life better. But down the line, we'll see that, it, oh, that was just a distraction. I was, uh, in, I was working on this project and, and start pulling back, pulling away from it a little bit, uh, skimming off time from it a little bit, skimming off this and I had this set up and I had this organized and this came in and then now it's not all organized. And so I wanted to showcase you tonight and encourage you to stay focused. Stay focused. You stay focused on the assignment God has, has for you and everything else is going to start coming and it's going to be added. Because see, when you know your worth, you don't have to sell yourself. People come to buy. Right. They show up to buy. Yeah. People say, people say uh, uh, it's marketing, but it's something about the anointing on your life where you don't have to market. You just have to do what God, oh my God, I feel God. You just have to do what God is telling you to do. You don't have to market because he says that if you take care of him, he's going to take care of you. And so I wanted to encourage you to, to, to just stay focused on the things of God. Everything that you think you're missing, you ain't missing it. What God is doing, he's establishing you. Yes. He's establishing you for that great day. And when, when that day comes, you're going to have an aha moment and say, now I know why I couldn't just stay back there because it was beneath me. Yes. Now I know why I couldn't tolerate it and just be okay with this because I'm worth more. And so as you go into this new, into this new adventure, stay focused on it be encouraged and know that you are ministry to a lot of people. They are watching you. Even when you don't want to be watched. Glory to God. I'm going to turn it back over uh, to you, Lady Alexis, so you can tell the, the, the people of God what you want them to know most about you and where, where your shop is, where they can find you, how they can reach you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, what I would like uh, everyone to know the most about me is that I give 100% into everything that I do. That is what sets me apart. Um, no matter how I'm feeling in a day, I always show up and give my best to people because I believe people deserve that. Um, and I wanna encourage other people who are wanting a business or wanting to experience growth within their business um, to remain um, in integrity and do right by the people that God sent to bless your business um, because God will not send you increase if you mishandle what he is already giving you to start off with. Um, especially when you're dealing with people and their money and their finances. Yes. 
So always make sure that you are handling people's finances with integrity, you know. Um, so I can actually, um, I'm located on Instagram. I'm also located on Facebook. Um, my name is at Lay by Lexi. So you can, um, Lexi is spelled with two eyes. And you can find me on either Instagram or Facebook. Um, all of my work is, is posted on there. I also have a link that is attached that will take you directly to my booking site. Just in case you are interested in booking a service with me, I have that listed on there as well as my pricing and availability goes. Is your picture on your, on your at laid by Lexi, your logo? Yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. Are you available for uh, all types of events or are you focusing just on uh, the shop right now? So I can be booked for weddings, birthdays, any type of event. Um, I do travel too. So um, if you need hair and makeup services together, I, I offer that um, with travel. So, yes. Amen. Amen. Pastor Diani, do you have a closing uh, remark or question? Um, so um, just a, one question. Are you looking to um, expand your shop or get a, a bigger shop in the future? Um, down the line, is that a goal, a vision for you? That is a goal and a vision um, down the line. Um, actually, right now, I'm really just soaking up where I'm at. Um, I think sometimes we always look for, okay, what's next? Um, like I got, okay, I've gotten my salon suite. So what's next? Like, you know, now I need a building, you know? And I, I think I actually had to stop and look around and, and realize that even just Thank being God. in a salon suite is a big deal. That's right. Um, it's it's a huge thing, yes. um, and a lot of people haven't made it to that point. Yeah. So it's a blessing to to be in a salon, you know, to have my own space, That's and I right. enjoy having my own space. Um, as we continue to evolve, the salon experience has evolved. A lot of times, people enjoy that one on one experience mm -hmm. that they get with their stylists you know rather than you know the salon experience so as of now I'm just enjoying the um being able to provide that for my clients I'm enjoying my suite but um if if God sends the right people to help me expand then I'll expand but it's all about getting the right people especially when it's your your name your brand Mm -hmm. and they have to have a passion for it how I have a passion for it because when you yeah. work so hard to get to where you're at you can't just bring anybody you know on so we'll and see. I think that <laughs> a lot of times what causes businesses to stumble is they don't hear God and they move with doing what everybody else is doing mm -hmm. but when you walk in your own uniqueness you are able to stay rooted and grounded in what God has told you to do. And so I think that that is so awesome to hear you say that you're just enjoying where God has brought you and you're not allowing people to belittle that because that is a place in God. And as it is a place in God, it is a blessing from God. And so because some people feel in their kitchen. Yeah. But we thank God that you not only have a suite, but you can give people private conversations. When they come and sit in your chair, they don't have to worry about somebody in the next chair over hearing their, their conversation or being in their space. And that's a blessing. And people are looking for that because the world has evolved to a place where they don't people don't want a lot of exposure around other people. That's true. You have anything to say, Pastor Natasha? 
Uh, I'm just excited. Um, and one thing that I love that uh, Lady Alexis, Miss Alexis said is about the one-on-one -on -one experience. I can remember as a little girl, the only people who would get their one-on-one -on -one experience with a stylist was those who had money or you would see celebrities. But yes. I thank God that you have created an atmosphere where all women from all walks of life can have that one-on-one -on -one catering experience spa experience that wasn't afforded to many yes. before it's like when i was growing up so i salute you on this amen 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 and we showcase you tonight for our black history moment because you are a young lady who is thriving and you are moving you are um you're trusting god and you're standing on God's promises. And that's what it's all about. And even if you never mount a pulpit, you have preached more than a lot of preachers by yes. white the way you live. And so that's what it's all about. And so we thank God for you being here tonight, Lady Alexis. We give God the glory. Thank y'all for having awesome. me. Amen. Awesome, awesome segment. Yeah. Yes. So do you have anything else that you would like to say before we have Pastor Natasha close us out in prayer? Uh, I don't have anything else. I think I said everything. Well, we thank God, oh, Pastor Natasha. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be on the line tonight. We thank you for this awesome anointing uh, trailblazer who have joined us on tonight to be showcased. We thank you for her life and we thank you for the anointing that is upon her life. We thank you for the uh, for the training and the upkeeping that she took for under her mother's tutelage. And we thank you, oh God, that she's stepping out in it by faith. We ask Lord Jesus that you will cover her and her shop, her household, her son under the blood of Jesus, that you will continue to lead and guide her that you would keep her, oh Lord, ears inclined to your lips to say when to move, when not to move, when to sit still, when to speak. We thank you for the wisdom that she has beyond her years. We thank you, oh Lord, that she is rooted and grounded and confident in who she is. We thank you for the inspiration that she is to women all over, Lord, both old and young, and we give you the glory for her life. Now we ask, Lord Jesus, that those who are watching and those who will come back to watch, that they will be inspired by something that was said through the word of God, through the life of David, that they'll be inspired of, oh Lord, by something that was said by Miss Alexis, oh God, that will encourage them that they too can walk out no matter what, against all odds, no matter what. They can face whatever giant. So we ask, Lord, that as we leave this purity with purpose, that we won't leave your presence, and it is so in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for tuning in. We thank you for your ears. We thank you for your time and we hope to meet you again this time next week god bless god bless